super mind-blowing how much diversity there is in living critters on the planet. This is just a little animal gig. These are, this, this is in the fish category. What is that thing? It's like a dragon, a sea dragon related to seahorses. This is a frogfish that actually is um, on its way to using fins as feet. Like, look at that thing. Um, fish, have you ever been snorkeling? Like, the getting to go and look at all these, like, amazing fish, super fun. Um, doesn't that look like sort of a limb? Like, yeah, you could actually maybe walk on that thing. It's, it's starting to look tougher and tougher. And eventually some of those critters came out onto land and had the anatomy to support it. And then, I mean, at that point, like, think about that. So you were a fish. You were in the water. You um, see, like, there's life out there. There's stuff on land. and dude, if I could just get out there, maybe I could eat some of those worms, and nobody else is out there eating those things. So it's like a free-for-all out there. So the critter that had the mutation, the genetic mutation, that modified those chunky bones in the arms and made it so that they could drag themselves out, that critter had an advantage. And that advantage, probably was reproductive. I'm still alive to make babies. My babies are going to be able to eat whatever that is. So they're more likely to stay alive and pass on their genes. And you can see how these changes can happen over time. Salamanders, oh, that's a cute one. That's a very cute one. Frogs, like, look at this diversity to the critter, the frog or rep, um, amphibian-like critter that said, hey, you know, I'm stuck by the water. If I could lay an egg that didn't need to be in water, I wouldn't have to stay by the water. I could go and populate other places that don't have vertebrates in them yet. And so this reptile scene totally started out waterish. But then man started getting into desert land because you've got the amniotic egg, and that can let you live in different places. The birds, which are reptiles, avian reptiles, a phenomenal group of organisms. They're dinosaurs. Look at this diversity. They're so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. And then we get into mammal land where I'm just going to keep that amniotic egg up inside me, and I can go anywhere. And mammals are a successful and very diverse group of organisms, my friendly platypus. The mama platypus, her milk falls onto her belly, and she makes a little bowl in her belly with her milk because baby platypi that I said can't, like, suck with those beaks, can't suck with that thing. And so they, like, they lap up the milk from her little belly bowl. <laughs> Oh, super cute. I want a baby platypus. Really, it's a mammal. And it's a mammal that went into the water and was like, hey, there's no mammals in here. I can dominate this scene. And they do. Mammals, like, look at these incredible, diverse. Don't you just want to go out and, like, find all these things and, like, pet them? Aw. <laughs> and yawn with them and cuddle that. I want to cuddle that. I don't want to cuddle that one. No, thank you. I don't really want to cuddle that one either. He looks kind of a little cranky right there. Um, I feel like that sometimes. Oh, they give each other kisses. That's nice. And eat some eucalyptus because that's delicious. And some bamboo too and whatever that is. Like, I want to eat that and cuddle that. Oh, and they cuddle each other. That's super sweet. And there are mine. I put this picture in there because, dude, that's when my kids were really cute. That one is almost as tall as me, and I want to, like, punch him in the nose. Like, stop that. No more growing for you, young man. Young man? What? He's going to be a teenager this year. That's crazy. All right. Good work. Don't be overwhelmed. You can totally tackle that cladogram bit by bit. Think about evolution. Think about biodiversity and you can rock this thing. All right, holla back, dogs.